Okay, I'm going to show you how to set up a, an optimization problem where we'll use the optimization capabilities within Comsol to do uh, parameter estimation. So the first step is to set up a forward model of the process that you're interested in um, simulating. And so what I have here is a diffusion problem where this is my problem domain and I've got a, um, a specified uh, concentration boundary right here. Let me see, I can open it up and show you the model. Uh, so I've got a concentration boundary right here and then this subdomain uh, is one diffusivity and this subdomain here is another diffusivity. And basically it's just a, a box uh, so there's no flux across all the boundaries. So we put a concentration on here and that causes uh, diffusion into the, the box. And so we can, we can set up this simulation uh, fairly easily and run it in a forward model. The concentration uh, here increases with time. And so what I did was to run this and I put in a um, domain point probe right there in the center and recorded the concentration as a function of time uh, at that point. And that is, then I save that as a data file. And I'm gonna just assume that that data is uh, something that we could measure experimentally. And so uh, this simulation will uh, be assumed to represent a, an experiment that we've set up that looks like this. Um, and we measure the concentration here. And what we want to do is uh, it, take those data and uh, interpret them to estimate the diffusivity of this little layer right here. Okay, um, so we've run it. I've created the file and let me show you what that file looks like. Um, so here it is in Excel. Um, this is time in seconds. This is the X location, the Y location of the point, and uh, this is the concentration. Okay, so it's at uh, X and Y are, are the same. It's both uh, 0 0.005 um, meters, five millimeters. Uh, and so we've saved this as a CSV file and that's going to be the data file that we uh, will import. So we need to be able to access this file two ways. One is to just be able to view it. So I uh, used an interpolation function right here. Um, I added that in my in definition. And if I open that up here, um, this, uh, I browsed and selected the, the file. Uh, that CSV file that I just showed you. And then if, when I do that, what happens is the number of arguments for this file, the number of arguments comes up as default of three. Well, the argument is just, just one argument and it's time uh, and that's in the left-hand column. So I need to change that to one. And then the data that I'm gonna use is in the, it's in the fourth column, but the first column is, um, is, is the time column and it's, uh, it doesn't count uh, because it's specified here as an argument. So the data, the concentration is in position number three, the third column to the right of the, the time column, okay? And so we set it up like that. We can take a look at what this, to make sure we've got the, the right data there. Um, there's the, there's the data and uh, it's, it's formatted nicely. One thing we can do actually, if we wanna plot these data, uh, this, is, this is just a screen plot, but if we use create plot, we'll generate the plot down here um, and we can take a look and see about the format. So you, you can see down here that there's a, there's a point plot and a line plot, the, point, the points will give you, let's see if we take a look at so now we're viewing the pot itself. So there's the, there's the line right here, there's the points, and then you can see this little red line here and here, that's given here under these extrapolations. So this shows you the format of how to plot these data. 
Um, the other thing that we can do is just, if we wanted to plot points, for example, these points, we can just drag this up uh, to another, um, another plot. And that's in fact what I did here uh, when I'm, I'm gonna plot the data right here. And so I just, I just generated the plot like this and then dragged this point uh, graph up, up like that. Um, this is what we'll use when we uh, take a look at the um, results of the, uh, of the parameter estimation. Okay, so there's the data. We can now take a look at it. And now we need to set up the optimization. So what we'll do is create an objective function that will uh, be the, the um, sum of the squared differences between this data file and uh, the simulation. So we've got to do two things. The first thing is that we've got to put in this optimization node. So this is just like a physics node. We can right click up here and well actually I guess we would right click right here on the model and add physics and find uh, this optimization node put that in and then to set this up we want to go to least squares objective right there put that in and then all this stuff will be blank so we're going to use this least squared objective node to in, import the, or basically to create the objective file um, and or the objective um, function. And so we've got to give it that data file. So here, uh, this is pointing to the, the data file that we just saw. It's called point two, uh, uh, point data two dot CSV. Um, and right here, these three or these four things are uh, put in by right clicking and selecting here so basically what happens is when we select a file here we have to tell the software what each column in the file is so uh, this is the left column and then it goes from left to right as we go down here so the first column on the left is the time and then uh, this is, these next two are coordinates. So this one is the X coordinate, and this one is the Y coordinate. And then the value here, uh, this is the, um, this will specify, well, that the fourth column in the data file is the value. And then we also have to put right here um, how Comsol is going to calculate the um, the the predicted value um, uh, by the, the in the software. So the, the this position tells us um, basically then we're gonna we'll read in the the data in the fourth column and at using these coordinates and this time we'll calculate a value of C to compare to the data. Okay, and that's going to be then. Uh, how the objective function is set up. Okay, so we get the objective function set up and then we have to go to the study. And what I would recommend doing is create a study uh, and just set it up in the usual way, run it and make sure that it runs as a forward model. And then go in here, right click and put in this optimization node. That'll give you this thing right here. And this will now take control of the solver and run it um, in, run it, run it what will amount to many times um, using uh, this as the objective function. Now, there are a variety of ways of searching for the, the, the optimal value um, in this case, it'll be the minimal value of the objective function. Uh, the default is to use this method, the Nelder Mead method. But as you can see here, there are a variety of other uh, possibilities. So we'll just go with the default for now. The thing that you'll need to do is come down here and you have to tell it what the objective function is. So if you go here, 
and select that one. There's only one objective function right now, um, and so it's pretty easy. But we could put in more, so uh, we need to be able to select the ones that we want to use. Um, and then this, this one here should be selected by default. Make sure that it's active. Um, all of this, you can uh, probably just use the, um, the defaults. We want to minimize the objectives. We want to use the uh, sum of the objectives. And this is uh, the solution is just auto. So then what you'll need to do to get this set up is to say what parameter you want to vary. And so if you press this, this plus, then you get access to the, the, the different parameters that are um, set up as, as global parameters. So it accesses these parameters up here. So I only have two, and uh, this one called uh, D11 is the one that I'm going to want to use. OK. So you select it, and we give an initial guess. And we, we need to know something about the parameter in order for this to work. So we give an initial guess. And we also need to put in a scale. And this is particularly important for parameters that have um, very large or very small values. The scale here is used to get this value uh, to basically it's going to divide this value to hopefully get it in the range around around one okay so the scale should be something similar to what you expect the true value should be and then we also need to bound it so we get give a lower estimate and an upper estimate um, of what we think the parameter is so this is a diffusivity in meter square per second um, that's pretty high uh, value. That's about as high a value of uh, diffusivity in water um, as we would expect. Um, so that's a pretty reasonable upper bound, I, I think, for this problem. OK, so we don't need a constraint. I set up to do automatic plotting. And I made a, a plot that does uh, shows both predicted and observed. And then um, I have the keep objective values in a table. We'll show the individual values. This will show us what the results are. Um, and that's all we need to do. So that should now set this up. And uh, we can run it. And let's see. Let's go. Now during running, the, um, the solver will run many times. It will be guided by the um, Nelder Mead optimization uh, algorithm. And it will be varying this parameter D11 to try to minimize the residual between the observed data, shown here as points, and the simulated data, shown as a blue line. Um, and so it tries a variety of values and converges on uh, what will be the, the best fit.